it's the end of the month, end of June, going into July, can you believe it, halfway through the year, and I feel like I've lived a decade already, to be honest with you. But we're going into July, so I wanted to share with you some of the plants in June that I've really taken notice of, um, in the sense of as it's growth and really just coming out of their shell a little bit, so to speak. But I wanted to do something a little bit different this month, and um, I'm going to show you what I have in mind, so stay tuned. So for the month of June, the plants I select for the month of June that are really standing out for me, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to go back and look at my plants that started off as cuttings that were given to me or that I purchased in a very small pot, in a little two inch pot, and they have since really grown from a cutting or from a two inch pot, okay? So I found a few, I have some right here in front of me and a couple that are outside uh, that are a little too big actually to bring inside. So we're gonna take a little uh, field trip out to the balcony here in just a little bit. But I wanted to start inside um, with some tropical house plants. And this one here, I didn't take it out of its hanging, um, the hanger because, you know, when you take uh, plants out of a hanger, you can damage them, tear the uh, uh, stems and uh, leaves and everything. So I didn't want to do that. But this here is a heart leaf philodendron, the green one the basic one, but she's anything but basic. And this started off as a little two inch pot that I purchased, I think it was from um, Hertz Gardens. And it didn't do anything for quite a while, but in the last few months, this spring and going now into summer, she's really taken off. I have her hanging in my um, bedroom in an east facing window. And instead of it trailing down, I have her growing up. Let's have her attached there with the with a little clip there. Um, and I have her growing up this, it's not, mac well it's a macrame, but it's made out of twine. And it's very long. So I'm gonna have her grow up this hanger. And she's doing incredible. You can see a lot of the new growth there. Look at that. Beautiful. Lots of new growth. And um, as soon as one leaf opens, she's got another one already growing there. So she's not wasting any time at all in getting new leaves out. And she is in a ceramic mug. Got this at um, Goodwill and I just drilled a hole in it and the ceramic retains a little bit more moisture for a little bit longer than a terracotta pot, so she seems to like that. But this uh, Hartley philodendron started off as a little two inch pot and she's doing wonderful. I'm really, really happy with the amount of growth that she's giving off, beautiful. That's the first one. The next one you've probably seen quite a bit on my Instagram and um, I have um, done a repotting video on it, also uh, highlighted it when I did the um, totem pole, moss pole uh, tutorial and that is my philodendron micans. This was given to me as a, a few cuttings, I think three, three cuttings, three or four and it's doing incredibly well. I've actually had to tie another piece of twine onto the pole because since that video, since I potted her up in uh, new soil and attached her to the moss pole, she's grown a good three inches and she's growing even more too because look at that. I'm going to try and get it to grow around the pole so it doesn't outgrow the pole as quickly as opposed to just letting it grow straight up. I'm going to have it in a twine around the moss pole to take up more of the pole, 
one and two to have it look a little bit fuller uh, on the moss pole but she's doing brilliant really is now all of the leaves are facing that way because I have it right behind me here in a east facing window and all the leaves tend to be growing this way so I think once I um, rewind it around the pole um, it will start filling out and I can rotate it every now and then so all of the leaves get some sunshine but she's doing brilliant and that is my philodendron micans and thank you to Ruthie in Florida from Ruthie's Succulent Obsession she is the one that sent me this cutting look how beautiful it's doing Ruthie now we're going to start going into succulents and this succulent here, you, I don't know if you may have uh, heard of it before or not, but I've had it for a while. This little guy here is a Gasteria glo glomerata, but its common name is ox tongue. And the reason being is because the texture of the leaves is very, very rough. I guess like an ox this ton <laughs> you could say but this one here I got in a tiny little two inch pot. it was just this centerpiece right here just this one and since then this was about a year ago maybe 18 months um, it's given off two three pups yeah three pups on it it's a slow grower I will say that for it it is a slow grower guest areas usually are but such a unique plant and you can really see on this pup at least the way that the leaf pattern grows with that isn't that unique and um, I believe I may have gotten this online through uh, Mountain Crest Gardens I believe is where I got this one um, not sure if they still carry it, but um, that is where I believe I got it. And it's a Gasteria glomerata or ox tongue, which is a really unusual name to have it. But like I said, it is because of the texture on the leaves. Really unique. And Gasterias are great, like Haworthias, to have as indoor succulent because um, they don't like direct sun they can do well in bright light indoors um, this one I do have outside but it is in an area where it does not get direct sun it's on uh, my shelf out there and it does not get direct sun while it's out there and um, although it started off in a little two inch pot you know and it's still in a terracotta two inch pot it's given off a lot of pups since then so if you're um, wanting to do succulents indoors and you don't have a lot of room gasterias haworthias are the great option to go because they don't grow very fast and they don't like direct sun so you can keep them indoors and in bright indirect uh, light or even some medium light too. some Haworthias will take medium light too okay so those are the ones that I have indoors I've got a couple outside that I want to show you so let's go outside okay we are outside on my balcony and the plants I wanted to show you I'm going to start off with this one right here this is a totem pole cactus and the bottom portion here sorry about that is the um, original cutting that I got it must have been about three years now that I got this original cutting right there I purchased it at a succulent cacti show <sighs> sorry about that I purchased it at a succulent cacti show the branch right there was only three dollars friends can you believe that three dollars and it's a little wonky inside of the pot because the cutting was an arm from a larger plant and the arm was growing kind of at a curve so I had to cut it this way but it's it's took a little while to take root it um, probably didn't even start sending off this particular 
uh, branch here until last year actually and but since then you can see it's a good 18 inches almost 18 inches now in height for that branch there there is another little branch that um, was on it but I bumped it and and it uh, fell off I have it rooting inside and it's only about three inches long um, so I have it rooting inside but this uh, cutting here that I got for three dollars at a cacti show is one of my favorite plants out here and this year this branch right here has just absolutely taken off in growth really really incredible of growth I'm hoping that it'll give off another branch on the other side because um, I'd really like for it to kind of even out but I love totem pole cactus because they do not have any pricklies on them no spines on them they're nice and smooth and they're just beautiful they really are now another cutting that I want to show you is this one right here this I got for my mom it was actually one piece this is the top part this is the bottom part and I she gave me one long piece and I cut it right here potted both of them up let them take root and this spring this started to bud in three months that's how big it's gotten isn't that incredible absolutely incredible the amount of growth that that bud has gotten off of it now this has grown too, probably a couple of inches the top part of the top part of it um, but that bud off of the bottom portion of the cutting that whole piece there in three months has grown that's about five inches there or so really incredible amount of growth and it is under my um, seven foot umbrella here it gets minimal amount of direct sun by the way this is a san pedro cactus i don't know if i mentioned that at the beginning this is a san pedro cactus and um, it gets minimal amount of sun out here i don't like it to get real direct sun because i'm scared of scorching it although it could probably handle a little bit more than I've, i let it have but I'm really kind of babying it <clears throat> because it is a cutting that my mom gave me from her cacti and I really want to take care of it and so far it seems to be loving it it is in this uh, terracotta pot I did have some other things around it some much of areas that I have since moved somewhere else um, but this uh, pot right here is pretty shallow these don't need a whole um, very deep pot. Their root system is pretty shallow, but it seems to be doing well in this succulent mix here. And I'm really hoping that it gives off another bud on the other side. I would love for this to have lots of branches on it. So that's my last one there. I do want to go inside now and show you something that has been um actually surviving that i thought i had lost so let's go back inside because it, it's hot out here friends it really is <laughs> let's pot. go inside but what i wanted to show you a plant that i had in uh icu for the last few weeks if not a good i would say two maybe three months is this calathea medallion I think I may have shown you this or talked to you about this plant, friends, um, in a previous video and letting you know that I was having really a lot of issues with it as far as it not progressing, the leaves dying off and everything. I did lose my Calathea ornata um, to spider mites, unfortunately. I tried to save it, but it was just too far gone. Um, so I had to get rid of it. But this one here, didn't have spider mites, but it, it was just not progressing and the leaves just kept um, dying off and brown browning and just, you know, shriveling up, even though I had it next to a humidifier. So 
a um, subscriber suggested to me putting it in um, a Ziploc bag and uh, really just basically giving it its own little tiny greenhouse in there. And I did that. I put it in a little bit smaller pot um, and took off any roots that I saw that were already dead and I put it in a, in a four inch pot, it was in six inch pot before, and I put it in a Ziploc bag and I misted it every couple of days and checked on it and for a while, it didn't do anything. For like three or four weeks, it didn't do anything. I thought, okay, I'm going to throw this away because it's, it's just taking up room in my propagation station. And all of a sudden, one day, I saw this teeny tiny little nub of green coming out of the soil. And look at it today. It's getting new leaves on it. Now, I've taken it out of, out of the Ziploc bag, but I'm afraid to put it back out because I'm afraid that the same thing's gonna happen to it. I think what I'm gonna do is try and find a glass cloche to give it its own um, humidifying greenhouse effect without the looks of a, paper, uh, a Ziploc bag and, and put it in there because I really think that this type of calathea needs really intense humidity. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm going to get any more calatheas because they are, they are finicky and, you know, they take up a lot of time to take care of. Um, so we'll see, but I'm going to try and find a glass cloche to put this in and see how it does that way. But I was really happy you to that subscriber. I don't remember who it was. I'm sorry, but thank you so much for giving me that suggestion because that saved this little guy's life. Thank you. Well, there you have it, friends. Those are the plants that I decided to share with you for the month of June that are doing really well, that started off small as a cutting or a little two-inch pot, and I've really, really shown a lot of growth in the last few months, and one that came from almost the brink of death. So <laughs> I'm really happy about that. If you enjoyed this video today, friends, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this video, then you're really going to enjoy this one that I'm going to put right up here for you to watch next, okay? So take a look at that one. I will see you in the next video. Have a blessed day, friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>